What's up guys, today's part two of the three part series of how to. Um, today we're gonna be talking about the bench press. The first video was on how to squat. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'm gonna link it right here. Go check it out, it's very informative. It teaches you how to front squat, back squat, pause squat, box squat, all of that. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about the bench press. We have three forms of the bench press. The regular bench press, we have the pause bench, or also known as competition bench, if you guys compete in powerlifting, and then we have the close grip bench. All right, so the first point here that I'm gonna be talking about is to keep four points of contact, okay? I'm talking your feet in contact with the ground the entire time. You wanna have your butt in contact with the bench. Don't pop it up as you're pushing. You wanna keep your shoulders slash mid-back in contact with the bench, as well as your head. You wanna have the back of your head in contact with the bench the entire time. Number two, as you're setting up, you wanna make sure that your knees are lower than your hips. Okay, this is gonna help with your leg drive. Leg drive is one of the most important parts <clears throat> when you're benching. A lot of people think it's all chest and pushing. It's a lot with your legs. This is gonna help you drive the bar up. All right, if you think about it, when a boxer punches, they're not just twisting, they're not just using their arm. They're driving a lot with the feet through the ground. Same as a baseball player swinging a bat. You're driving with your legs, okay? That's how you produce a lot of power. So you wanna make sure that you have a good angle. If your knees are lower than your hips, it's gonna help produce that punch, okay? Number three, timing the leg drive. This goes with driving through the legs, driving with that punch. When you come down, you wanna make sure that you're pushing the legs through the ground to help assist your arms. Next step, you wanna be tucking your shoulders. When you come down on the bench, you just don't wanna be laying there. You wanna make sure you squeeze your shoulder blades back. It's gonna give you good support, a lot of stability. So when you come down, as your shoulders are tucked, it keeps your elbows and shoulders safe, and you're pushing, all right? You wanna be pushing with your back. It's equally as important as your leg drive and using your pecs the entire way, okay? Next step, you wanna have a slight arch in your lower back. A lot of people that you see on Instagram or YouTube, they have a massive arch, huge arch. They're doing that to decrease the range of motion on the bench, which is good in competition because you only have to move a slight distance. So if you move a slight distance, you can obviously move a lot more weight. But if you're just doing it to do regular fitness or anything like that, you wanna make sure that you're just bench pressing, have a slight arch in your back that's gonna help you tuck your shoulders down and keep you a good supported. Okay? Next step, don't let your elbows flare out. A lot of people, when you come down, they might go like this and bench like this. That's gonna put a bad position on your shoulders. You wanna make sure you're tucked. This when it comes with the tucking the shoulders. So you're gonna tuck down, your elbows stay in like this. You're gonna come down and press straight up. Also, you wanna be making sure you're hitting at your sternum or chest level. Um, some people come up here, hit on the top, some people hit real low. If you're a competition presser and you know what you're doing, you can use a little bit more leverage to punch here, which will help you up. But if you're just, like I said, a normal fitness goer, just going to the gym, you want to make sure you stay chest height, all right? The last, last, most important part, full range of motion. There's tons of people out there who say they can go 315, they'll put it on, they'll go like this. That is not a rep. I'm sorry to tell you, that is not a rep. It's a no-go in competition. It's also gonna hurt your shoulders. It's gonna make you weaker. All right, you have to make sure you're going through the full range of motion because this right here is strengthening your triceps a little bit. All the way down, all the way up, it's gonna strengthen your pecs, your shoulders, your chest, your back, everything. So, I'm going to say it one more time. Full range of motion, all right? Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you some demonstrations. We're gonna do a front view, side view, and we're gonna see the bar path, um, how my setup is. It's pretty general, everyone usually does this. I might tuck a little bit more, but um, here we go. The first one up is the regular conventional bench press. All right, here we go. Next 
Next one we're gonna do is the pause bench, or like I like to call the competition bench, okay? Because when you compete in powerlifting, you're gonna come down, wait for command, and then punch back up. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, the last one is the closed grip bench. This one, you're gonna be a little bit tighter than your normal bench, and you wanna make sure that your elbows are not flaring out. You wanna come down straight, and then punch straight up. All right, so let me show you that one real quick. There you go guys, those are the three main movements for the bench press. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, put a like on the bottom, subscribe to my channel. There's gonna be a lot more how-tos coming up. Um, I have the deadlift how-to coming up soon. That's gonna be conventional and sumo. Okay, I might throw like maybe rack pulls or RDL, something like that in there. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. And thanks for checking me out.